This time on Wild Weather, we're taking in a classic Kansas beauty, a dream storm with beautiful structure. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to Wild Weather. I'm your host, Chris Center. You know in storm chasing, the ultimate combination is a supercell that's barely moving but also tornado. When that combination happens, you're in for a dream chase. These days are rare, but they are incredible when they happen. Today's episode is all about one of those days, and the good news is, because this storm's moving so slow, we're gonna be able to spend some time looking at what makes supercells tick. This is gonna be a really fun episode talking about the structure of supercells and how they work, etc. It's gonna be fun. So, to get us started, let's actually start with the Weather Ed segment about supercells and what makes them go. Supercells are the meanest, biggest, and baddest thunderstorms on the planet. These storms get their name because they have a singular, persistent, and incredibly strong rotating updraft. There are different types of supercells, which are classified by how much rain they are producing in their rear flank downdrafts. You have the LP supercells, the HP supercells, and the classic supercells. For a supercell to form, you need a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere, and for them to become especially mean, a lot of instability too. Supercells are responsible for the world's largest hailstones and their most violent tornadoes. For storm chasers, a supercell thunderstorm is the goal of every storm chase. We're on the road to Western Kansas and storms are already bubbling up in the distance. You know, typically on days like today, We'll leave our house in Oklahoma City and we'll drive to the target area. Today, that means we're taking a six hour drive to Scott City, Kansas. And we actually can't get a hotel tonight. We have to be back in Oklahoma City tomorrow, which means we gotta make that same drive back. So, failing is absolutely not an option today. With Brandon Goforth tagging along, the stakes are high today. This storm that is maturing before our eyes has to get it together because we are guaranteed to spend 15 hours on the road today. We need to have something to show for our efforts. As we arrive in Scott City, the storm goes tornado warned. And this storm is organized. It's time to party. F for storm chasers, of course. As we get into position, our supercell isn't incredibly defined, but all the pieces are there. You have the hell core to the north and east of the updraft. You have the storm base, which is flat right now, but I suspect will be the place we are looking for tornadic development later. Above that, you can see moist low level winds feeding into the storm. You know, some days when you chase, you can just see the atmosphere evolve in front of you. You can tell when those ingredients are coming together. Today, you're seeing that happen right before our eyes as those low level moist winds increase you're seeing this storm really take off. Now from our vantage point, the tornadic portion of the storm is kind of hard to see. But once again, this supercell just has an amazing look. You can see the storm rotating on the broad scale above and in the tornadic area below. This shows the complexity of supercells. To get a supercell like this in the first place, you just need a lot of wind shear, some high instability, and a good sustained source of lift. Storms like these happen every year, but they're still so rare, and the power they emanate is just so real. This is a supercell on the broad scale. They're tiny, but so huge at the same time. Now I'm gonna be honest, we actually did see the tornadoes from this storm, but we weren't in the best position to really get a great view of them. That's because we are just like enamored with this storm. It is, it is incredible what's going on in front of us. This is one of the best looking storms I've ever seen. 
And honestly, this storm, it didn't move. We sat in the same spot for over an hour, filmed this storm. It was incredible to witness. This is just as good as it gets, a supercell setting still, beautiful, turning over the Kansas countryside. Dream storm. As we get north and set up, the sun is really beginning to lower on the horizon. Our supercell though is still chugging along. You can see the downdraft or hell core to the right and the broad scale counterclockwise motion of the storm overall. And look below, see how turbulent the low levels are? Identifying a tornado threat in that means looking for something that's more consistent or what we call organized. So far, there hasn't been much of a hint of that in this spot. With the sun setting, our storm is appearing less tornado-y by the minute. The reason for that is our updraft has begun to shrunk a bit, and that's always a bad sign when it comes to tornado formation. Another thing is that the low levels just consistently in the storm see chaotic and disorganized. And while the storm as a whole is churning, the low levels just can't seem to focus themselves. Now it seems like this storm isn't going to be able to produce a final tornado now that we're in position. This updraft is shrinking just ever so slowly, but that doesn't mean the storm isn't going to look great in the final minutes of sunlight. This was an amazing, outstanding, and super day of storm chasing. And thank goodness too, because we still have that six hour drive back to Oklahoma City. It's nine o'clock, and I think it's time to wrap up this day. So, 15 hours of driving later, I can honestly say it was worth every second. We'll see you next time.